As expected, the Federal Reserve raised the federal funds rate by 25 basis points to a new range of 25 to 50 basis points at their March meeting. Today, I'm going to provide our initial take on the Fed's latest moves and what to expect from them going forward. In addition to making the first rate hike since 2018, the Federal Reserve also released updated projections on economic growth, inflation, and future Fed rate hikes. The Fed did downgrade its economic growth forecast to 2.8% for this year. The Fed recognizes that the near-term economic effects from the Ukraine invasion is for slower growth, primarily due to higher energy costs. But the Fed is also confident in their above-trend forecasts for economic growth, primarily due to the continued strength in the labor market. The Fed also increased its projections for inflation. Year-over-year -year CPI was recently reported at a very high 7.9%. With the recent rise in energy and commodity prices, we likely haven't seen the peak in inflation yet. The Fed recognizes that the drivers for increased inflation have broadened out beyond just higher gasoline prices and supply chain issues. We are seeing above average inflation in rents, wages, and services. And given that Ukraine is one of the biggest global exporters of wheat and corn, we are likely to see another surge in food prices. Now, since retail inventories have started to build again, we could see some goods deflation later this year. For achieving its 2% inflation target, the Fed prefers to use the PCE index, and their current projections show inflation gradually slowing down this year but still remaining slightly above its 2% target through 2024. As far as future rate hikes, the Fed is guiding toward a total of seven 25 basis point hikes this year, one at each remaining meeting, and an additional three and a half hikes in 2023. This would bring the overnight rate near 2% at the end of this year and at 2.8% by the end of 2023. If inflation doesn't start to trend down as they expect this year, then they could even pick up the pace to 50 basis point hikes if needed. As far as the Fed balance sheet, the Fed didn't provide any details other than to say that it expected to begin to reduce the size of its balance sheet at an upcoming meeting. But based on Chairman Powell's press conference and other Fed governor speeches, we are expecting the Fed to provide details on the reduction size at their next meeting in May, and then implement quantitative tightening in June. Letting bonds roll off from the Fed's balance sheet will serve as additional tightening of financial conditions in addition to the seven rate hikes. Our view of the Fed action is that it was pretty hawkish. With 11 interest rate hikes spread out over the next two years, the Fed is committed to bringing inflation down and is front-loading these interest rate hikes. We are expecting economic growth to be positive this year, but at a much slower pace than what the Fed is expecting. With the unemployment rate at 3.8% and the demand for labor at decade highs, the prospects for continued increases in consumer spending to drive economic growth are very good. We will be watching for signs that the Fed is hiking too much too quickly in the face of an economy that is already slowing down. The message from the bond market is one sign to monitor. Following the meeting, short-term yields rose and the long end of the bond market rallied amid concerns about the economy holding up. Stocks also rallied on the news. With the drop in long-term rates post the Fed meeting, the NASDAQ led the short-term bounce in the stock market. I think the equity market was encouraged by the Fed's confidence in the economic growth picture but it's trading day to day off the headlines coming out of Ukraine. Overseas, we are also seeing emerging markets bounce off the bottom, as China has a 5.5% economic growth target and will need to stimulate their economy to hit those growth targets. Thank you for listening and for your continued trust and confidence in BOK Financial.